Hello there, my favourite obscurists. Thank you again for joining me at the Den of Obscurity. Now, boy oh boy, do I have a treat for you today. For the first time so far on the show, I found a game that I genuinely think looks awesome. Judge Dredd vs Death. After taking a sneaky peek at some of the reviews for this game, I found that the campaign was pretty average, whereas the arcade mode and the multiplayer mode gained a bit of a cult following. I can easily blast through the campaign mode and have a go at the arcade mode, but whether there's still people playing the multiplayer after 15 years, it's a whole different bag of kittens. In all fairness, the whole package is pretty nice, there's some decent artwork on there, a bit of blurb on the back, a nice substantial manual with some character and plot development in there. Welcome to Mega City 1, a city of over 400 million people, every one of them a potential criminal. It is the third decade of the 22nd century, and unemployment is widespread. Boredom is universal, and only the judges can prevent total anarchy. Take on the role of the most feared and respected of all the judges, Judge Dredd. As he attempts to overcome the sudden outbreak of vampires in the city, could this be the work of the malevolent Dark Judges? After reading the manual, I'd say, yes, definitely is. This game was even cool enough, apparently, to get its own tie-in novel from which I shall now read a passage for your personal enjoyment. <clears throat> no. Anyway, the anticipation is killing me, so let's get this bad boy in. We'll have a blast through the campaign and even the arcade mode. Possibly the multiplayer, but I very much doubt it. Oh, and I don't really have the book, by the way. This is a copy of Danny's Inferno. <laughs> And as much as it may look like it, I did not leave my script on screen for that last bit. Maybe you should lay off the narcotics, okay? It is the third decade of the 22nd century. Unemployment is endemic, boredom is universal, and only the judges can prevent total anarchy. Empowered to dispense instant justice, they are judge, jury, and executioner all in one. The most feared and respected of all the judges is Dread. He is the law. You are adoring public. Dredd, you gotta stop holding your fan club meetings outside City Hall. Dispense with the wisecracks, Anderson. Tell Dredd what you just told me. The precogs at Psy Division are predicting a terrible plague. Dredd, the last thing this city needs is an epidemic. Citizens crammed together the way they are, it would spread like wildfire. I'll keep my ear to the ground, Chief Hershey. In the meantime, disperse those demonstrators outside. Consider it done. Judge Dredd vs Death plays exactly how it looks, like quick basically. The controls are floaty, there's a constant sense of the world having slightly less gravity than normal, the enemies all run around like the AI keeps giving them different waypoints every 3 seconds, and explosives either obliterate your opponents or don't affect them at all. Yes, the game has its quirks and flaws, but that doesn't stop it from being an enjoyable and relaxing FPS experience. It was never going to win Game of the Year, but it was always going to be a messy romp through a storyline that was written by the world's most jaded goth. The Dark Judges are free, and they want to murder everybody just because they're alive. Yep, that's their crime, being alive. So we start on a brief tutorial mission which shows us the basics of movement and shooting. The pistol, by the way, has like 12 different settings. I found myself using only two of them. The game is a first-person shooter with a couple of added elements. I mean, yes, you have a lot of shooting and explosions. Well, a hell of a lot of shooting and explosions. It's mostly shooting and explosions. But there's also the ability to approach and arrest criminals too. This adds to your judge meter? Performing arrests and not murdering innocents will bag you a good score at the end of a level. But honestly, I forgot about this after the first level. Besides, you soon find yourself up against zombies and vampires, and are you really going to try and arrest a vampire? 
If you murderize enough innocents, you'll eventually be hunted down by, I don't know, a group of even bigger, scarier judges? I ended up killing a fair few innocents on my playthrough, and this never happened to me, so... Nah. The second super exciting element of the game is the ability to find innocents and ferry them back to safety. Because everyone loves babysitting bags of shit who have less HP than a poorly amoeba. Either way, some levels will have a set amount of hostages to rescue, or if you're like me and can't be arsed, you can just shoot them and add it to your collateral tool. It's cool, they'll totally forget about it as long as I arrest some criminals later on, like this guy who is going to jail for... owning a hamster without a license. Scum. Anyway, so far you've seen the first two levels, and at this point, because I don't have the time or patience, we'll simply skip to the levels where we meet one of the dark judges, and ultimately to the end. Dark judges, zombies, vampires, we're doomed. Fred, Mortis is in there somewhere. We've managed to seal off the floors below. All exits are covered. Mortis is not leaving this building. You got that right. Firstly, we have Judge Mortis, a weasley little shit who likes to terrorize hospitals with undead and leave inconveniently placed hostages around for us to shoot, uh, to rescue. Either way, I spent a good half hour on this level simply because I couldn't find the last fucking hostage. It's not even a big map, it's just so labyrinthian and the final hostage was tucked into a corner where I couldn't see them. But, nah, maybe that's my fault for not being perfect. Anyway, after 30 minutes of fannying around, we take a light speed elevator up to the top floor to face Judge Mortis. But first, we have to try and rescue another bunch of hostages before we gas attack Judge Mortis. And as you can see, I did this with care and precision. Now it's time to smash the Dark Judge's pasty, and by smash his pasty I mean have him run scared into a conveniently placed quarantine bay for me to trap him in. Well, if he's supposed to be the most horrifying of the judges, then I think I'm in for an easy ride. Trapped curse, you dread! The three others remain to judge your life-infested city! Give up your worthless battle! Get a side squad down here fast. After Mr. Mortis, we head on down to Old New York, where we have to fight our way out of a sewer system, shoot some vampires, and then break into a museum. There we meet the delightful Judge Fear, whose two main attacks are sending wave after wave of his own men at you and throwing fucking bear traps at you. Again, this was a bit of a chore as I didn't realise you had to kill all the vampires before you could kill him. I tried a good five times to kill him before looking it up. I'm pretty sure nobody in the game told me to do this, but to be honest I was paying very little attention, so again it's probably my fault. Anyway, you shoot him until he dies and his spirit is thrown back into the underworld I think? I really don't know what's going on here. Control. I've trapped Judge Fear in the Egyptian vault of the Metropolitan Museum. Roger that. Anderson must have gone through. Drak!
we have Judge Death, who lives in the conveniently titled Dead World. I guess Death World was taken. Here we have to kill off some more vampires and skeleton people whilst progressing ever closer to the judge himself. When we find him, he is in one hell of a state, and he also got glitched on the stairway, so I shot more loads into him than a hick with a pretty pig. After a while, I realised he wasn't dying, so I had a look around and saw the incredibly obvious answer to this puzzle. Spread around the area were three people strapped into one of Barry Moore's sex racks, who have to be freed before we can give death a good old, well, shooting with a lot of bullets, as per. Finally, he fucks off and we're all free to watch the incredibly janky ending cutscene. Enjoy. We just eliminated the last of the vampires from Sector 5. The regen infestation is over. Good work, Fred. Rest assured that we're stepping up security on the Dark Judges. What about Anderson? Containing Judge Death's essence was a terrible strain on her. But she's doing fine, thank you very much. Joe, you weren't worried about me, were you? Control to Dread. Block war in progress. Corner of Reeves and Hopper. On my way, Control. Dread out. <sighs> I guess we'll never know. Now I know it looks like I sped through that without much care, but honestly the game is pretty samey. You just run around shooting things and then go to somewhere else and run around shooting more things and... I mean it's good fun, it's very cathartic, but very repetitive. Not a lot to talk about to be perfectly honest. So we're just going to keep the last two sections short and sweet because there's not a hell of a lot to talk about in all honesty. As promised, after the story mode I had a glance at the arcade mode, which as I presumed was just a bunch of mini missions in different locations. Things like kill this many guys in this amount of time, or rescue this many hostages without any dying, kill this, rescue this, kill this, rescue this, kill, pretty similar to the game to be fair. I tried one mission just to say that I had, and I literally stood in the same room mowing down enemies as they ran directly into me. I even got the best ranking, so go Ryan. And finally, of course, we come to the multiplayer, which, as I suspected, was completely barren. So, just to get a little bit of footage and give you an idea of what it's about, I entered a game with bots, where I immediately got my ass handed to me because what the fuck, why isn't this guy dying? This person didn't die. Neither did this person. Anyway, that pretty much wraps up multiplayer. It's basically a crap version of Unreal Tournament. Not that it even matters anymore. And that basically wraps up the whole game. So that's all we have time for today. Um, I must admit I actually had a degree of fun with this game. It's by no means a polished masterpiece but it does have some potential. It plays like an old Quake or Unreal Tournament game with the floaty controls and constant gunplay but I loved that kind of thing back in the day so. And although the plotline leaves a lot to be desired, as does the enemy AI, the graphics, the controls, the voice act, it still somehow comes together as a moderately enjoyable and very much cathartic experience. And for that, I offer you my pet hamster, for which I do not yet have a license, but sure that doesn't really matter, right? You know you shouldn't have that hamster. And you know you shouldn't have those magazines in your top drawer, you dirty motherfucker. Sentence. Life in hell.